The Great Migration, Journey to the North by Eloise Greenfield and illustrated by Jan Spivey Gilchrist. Between 1915 and 1930, more than a million African Americans left their homes in the South, the Southern part of the United States, and moved to the North. This movement was named the Great Migration. In the South, members of the Ku Klux Klan were attacking African Americans, making it unsafe for them to live there. There were white only signs on water fountains, in lunchrooms and other places, meaning that only white people could use them. Many African Americans could not find jobs in the areas where they lived. For all of these reasons, African Americans in large numbers began to move away. When they reached the North, they found that it was far from perfect. They had not escaped racial discrimination. Even so, things were better, and most people stayed in their new cities and worked hard to earn a living and take care of their children. In August of 1929, when I was three months old, my father took the train northward from our home in Parmalee, North Carolina, to Washington, D.C. My parents had heard from relatives and friends who had already moved to Washington how much better life was for them. Although Washington was not quite in the north, many North Carolinians and other Southerners settled there. My father found a job and a place for us to live. A month later, after he had saved enough money for the train fare, he sent it to us so that my mother, my brother, and I could join him. I was too little to know it then, but I had become a part of the Great Migration. Eloise Greenfield. Part one, the news. They read about it, heard about it, in letters and newspapers sent down from the North, from visiting cousins and brothers and aunts. There were jobs up there, nice houses, no Ku Klux Klan, everywhere you turn, burning down schools and homes and hope. They thought about it, talked about it, spread the word. Did you hear the news? Can it really be true? Well, I'm going to see. How about you? Two, goodbyes. Man, saying goodbye to the land puts a pain on my heart. I stand here looking at the green growing all around me. And I'm sad. But I keep hearing about this better life waiting for me hundreds of miles away, and I know I've got to go. Hope my old car can make it that far. Girl and boy, I almost cried having to tell my friends goodbye, but tomorrow I'll get to hug my daddy when I get off the train up north. Mama says he found a job and a place for us to live up north. I wonder what it's like. Anyway, as long as Mama and Daddy are there, I know I'm going to be happy. Woman, I can't wait to get away. I never want to see this town again. Goodbye, town. Goodbye, work all day for almost no, no pay. Enemy cotton fields trying to break my back, my spirit. Goodbye, crazy signs telling me where I can go, what I can do. I hear that train whistling my name. Don't worry, train, I'm ready. When you pull into the station, my bags and I will be there. Very young woman. What should I pack? Should I take everything in case I can't get back anytime soon? I'm a little scared. I'm a lot scared. Off to the big city by myself with just the church up there to lean on. Mama's making me go. She wants me to be happy and safe, but I see the sadness lying deep in her eyes. When she thinks I'm not looking, she puts my teddy bear in the bottom of the suitcase. She knows I'm going to need it. Three, the trip. Mostly, they travel by train, sit or stand in the railroad stations, crowds of people waiting, resting their old suitcases, cuddling their babies, holding the hands of the old, older children, carrying in bags and shoe boxes, food they've packed for the trip. They hear the whistle blow. It blows again, not so far away now. They see the train coming closer and closer and then it stops. They gather on the platform, hold out their tickets, climb aboard. All aboard, the conductor calls. It's time. They're moving slowly, then faster. Something too fast, something not fast enough toward a world they don't yet know. 
At each station stop, more passengers squeeze on until the train is full. The children like to sit beside a window and watch the towns go by. Watch the shapes of the trees, the fields of tobacco, and cotton, corn, and beans. The grown-ups talk. The children talk. They laugh. They make new traveling friends whom they will never see again. They watch the towns. They watch the fields. They think about the places they left. They daydream about the places they're going to. Going to Chicago, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, and more. Night. Nothing to see in the darkness except the stars and a little piece of moon, or maybe a big round one. The same moon, the same stars shine in their new cities. They fall asleep. A baby tries to cry, but sleep catches him in the middle of his complaint. Daylight. It's morning. A long trip. Almost there now. A new life is about to begin. Four. Question. Men and women. Will I make a good life for my family? For myself? The wheels are singing. Yes, you will. You will. You will. I hope they're right. I think they're right. I know they're right. We're going to have a great life. Got to try it. Going to do it. Going to make it. No matter what. Five, up north. In the stations, they greet their husbands, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends who have come to welcome them. Show them the way toward their future. In a few months, they will be the ones guiding newcomers. Who will guide other newcomers? Who will guide? And so on, and so on, and so on. Because the people keep coming, keep coming, keep on coming, filling up the cities with their hopes and their courage and their dreams. My family, Parmalee, North Carolina, nice town, not many jobs though. In 1929, not enough work for daddy, a man with a wife and two children. Some people were moving north. Mama and daddy read about it, heard about it from cousins and friends. Come north, they said, come to Washington, DC. August, mama and daddy, Wait at the station for daddy's train. Sad to separate, even for a little while. Maybe longer, who knows? They say goodbye, but mama doesn't cry, yet. She walks the road home alone, sits on the porch and lets the tears fall. One long month and the money comes, train ticket money. Daddy's found a job and a place for us to live. All aboard! The conductor calls. Not an easy trip for Mama. Two babies to care for. Me, four months old. My big brother, Wilbur, 18 months. A long ride and then... Washington! The conductor calls. We're home. We were one family among the many thousands. Mama and Daddy leaving home. Coming to the city with their hopes and their courage. Their dreams and their children to make a better life.